This is Super Yacht News with Eve Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So a fatal incident with an inflatable tender in France led to a major rescue effort which included uh, patrol boats and even a helicopter. The incident left a 37-year-old man dead and six people injured, including three seriously injured after the tender crashed into a floating mooring buoy in the middle of the night. The force of the impact ejected all of the people travelling in the inflatable tender into the water. Then followed a major rescue effort including Coast Guard patrol boats and a Navy helicopter searching the area for one missing person after the crash. According to local reports, the incident happened around 300 metres from a well-known beach in Saint-Tropez at around 2am. You can see the damage to the 8 metre inflatable tender after hitting the mooring buoy which is used by larger super yachts to tie up to prevent having to drop anchor. The emergency services quickly responded and administered first aid to the injured. Now, the people injured were aged between 20 and 52 years old. Now, the three people who were seriously injured required intensive medical care. It's, and it's very, very common for the super yachts to use the, uh, tenders like this to ferry people uh, between the boat, house at anchor and the marina. Now, it depends on the size of the yacht, really, to what type of boat is used. It also depends on who is in the boat, based on my own experience. An inflatable tender like this would be used by a smaller yacht that doesn't have a larger limo for guests, or it could be that this was for crew. We don't, we don't know this at, at this moment. Now, the mooring boys are extremely heavy. Uh, we hit one in Ibiza while stocking Stern 2 uh, many years ago, and we actually damaged one of our propellers and had to go into a dry dock to have it repaired. That's how that's how heavy these things are. Now, one of the things that I also can't help but think about was an incident, well, an almost incident that I was involved in years ago when making one of these similar trips. The deckhand uh, tasked to bring us back to the vessel was not the most disciplined of drivers, let's say, and he was often distracted on his phone. He also went far too fast in my opinion and I very often asked him to slow down which he usually refused to do or ignored. Uh, I also told him he shouldn't be using his phone whilst driving uh, particularly in a busy area uh, such as this place would have been. Uh, and now I don't know if this was the cause of this incident but the faster you go in these tenders the more you raise the bow and depending on the type of tender you know the driver is sometimes sat right at the back if it's a if it's a, 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 not, uh, an outboard motor um, and you know it limits the visibility now you throw in the distraction of a mobile phone and it's very easy to see how this could happen like i said I'm not sure if that's what happened here i'm just saying that based on my experience now we'll bring you more on that when we have it now we've got an update on a story we did last week uh, 11th of October, we did a video about Moti Yacht Kingdom 5KR crashing into a wharf in Tunisia. The yacht apparently crashed upon trying to manoeuvre into a docking position and caused damage to the bow of the ship, also scraped the port side of the vessel as well. As some people in the comments rightly saying that whoever built that wharf should get a medal because it stood up to the yacht very well. Anyway, we got contacted by a few people who told us that the same yacht had been involved in another incident prior to this one. In fact, at the beginning of the trip uh, from this vessel's previous location, so the vessel was moored in San Remo and it was traveling to Tunisia, where she would ultimately crash, uh, as, as you see in this footage here. Uh, now, the, the vessel allegedly crashed into a yacht moored in San Remo next to Kingdom 5KR before she left. Now, the information came in from a, a source who wishes to remain anonymous. He said that on departure from her San Remo berth, departing for Tunisia, where she had the reported incident, she collided with Moti Yacht Row, R-O-E, which was moored on his starboard side. There was a westerly wind blowing, moderately strong, when she departed. She requested the marina rib to be standing by, ready to push her bow to assist the bow thruster, which is kind of unusual. So it's possible... Is it possible that they had an issue with that bow thruster? We don't know. Anyway, it says when we uh, when she supply when she slipped her lines to depart, she immediately started to be pushed onto row and could not counteract the wind effect. When she was halfway out of the berth to, and had to start turning her bow due to the dock ahead, her stern made heavy contact with row's port hull and bow area and continued to, to contact as she moved out. 
nasty scraping down the port bow of row and damage to the starboard aft top side of kingdom now unfortunately we don't have any video footage or photographic evidence of this incident hence we said it was alleged to have happened uh, if you have any photographics or video footage of this incident please send it to us using wetransfer.com now you don't need to have an account with wetransfer.com to send uh, to us anyway we'll bring you more on that when we have it all right we'll move on to our next story now uh, the navigation record book for the sunken new zealand warship has been recovered by the royal navy hms tamar was uh, has been helping with recovery efforts since the new zealand navy ship hit the reef and sank off the coast of samoa recently samoa excuse me the royal navy ship had been on patrol at the time and went to assist uh, arriving soon after the manawanui sank the crew on board the Royal Navy ship have been searching for items from the wreck and monitoring all pollution. The navigation record book is likely to be an important piece of evidence in the course of any inquiry into the sinking. As there are no current further details about the record book available. Uh, also, the New Zealand Navy ship HMNZS Canterbury has also arrived carrying specialist equipment, the Defence Force said in a statement. There are actually three containers from the ship that were out on the reef. The team has emptied one of the containers and one was already empty, but the third apparently holds 3,000 kilograms of food, three metric tons of food. Unfortunately, that container is not watertight, so most of that food will have probably been ruined. Now, the containers have been damaged and are being moved by tides and swells, according to reports. They may have been removed by now because this was written for us on Friday. A New Zealand Defence Force and the Maritime New Zealand uh, have, have confirmed that so far no pollution has been found on the shoreline, nor any deceased wildlife. So we'll bring you more on that when we have it. All right, we'll move on uh, to our final story. And this is a Master Yachts website has returned to the internet. You, rem you might remember a chap called Richard Masters. He was the CEO of Master Yachts based in Palma, Mallorca. And his company had been doing management services for the yacht Moti Yacht Tango, which was linked to a sanctioned Russian. Uh, uh, he was sanctioned by the US at the time. He had been changing the name on invoices for the yacht services, replacing the name Tango with the name Fanta to hide the fact that he was dealing with the sanctioned Russian. He was arrested by the Spanish authorities uh, after a request by the US authorities uh, and the US tried to get him extradited for criminal charges. Uh, as this progressed through the courts, his business seemingly closed down and the building in Palma was emptied out and the website went offline. However, in recent weeks, the website has returned, suggesting they are back trading, I would guess. But interestingly, the address listed on the website is the same building in Palma, which remains empty, as you can see in this recent video footage. The case concluded when the Spanish authorities decided not to prosecute Mr. Masters, saying that he hadn't broken any laws by changing the names of the yacht on his invoices because they were internal invoices. And they refused to extradite him to the US to face those charges because he, uh, at the time the, the, the vessel wasn't sanctioned by the EU. And Mr. Masters, who is originally from the UK, clearly, clearly used the name Fanta to replace the name Tango based on the popular orange drinks of those same names. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. This was meant to go out on Friday, but I was a little bit under the weather, so we're doing it today instead. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any information for us about any of these stories or any others, you know how to get in touch. You can get us in the email address in the ticker. You can get us on the about page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter and on Threema. Uh, please be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for future notifications. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch up with you soon, bye bye.